This is the calcaneus or the heel bone. There are three articular facets where the ankle bone or the talus sits on top of the heel bone. The back joint here is called the posterior facet and the middle and anterior facets are on the front and, front and inside of this bone. In between these two joints, we have a naturally occurring space that's called the sinus tarsi. You'll note that there is no cartilage that's found in this space. That's gonna be very important. So this is the ankle bone, again, called the talus. The talus sits on top of the heel bone and there are two complex motions that the talus goes through on the calcaneus. It is supination, which tightens up the foot structure and pronation. So when the two bones are together, again, we have this nice open joint space that's called the sinus tarsi. Sinus means space, and tarsi is the hind foot bones. So when the ankle bone goes through the normal motions, that sinus tarsi space should basically stay open no matter, if, uh, no matter um, which foot motions are occurring, the supination or the pronation. Now, there's a medical condition where the talus partially slides on the, off of the heel bone and that creates an abnormal closure of this sinus tarsi space. And you can actually even see that there's a partial dislocation of the joint. The reason why this is important is that the, you have to imagine that the weight of the body above is resting on the top of the ankle bone and that weight should be evenly distributed go, passing through the back of the heel and then also passing through the front of the foot. When the ankle bone slides forward, there's an abnormal shift of forces. So what that means and why that's important is because the forces that should have been passing through the back of the heel are now passing through the front of the foot. And this will increase the strain to the tissues within the arch and the rest of the foot. Also, because of how that ankle bone slides off of the heel bone, then this creates uh, unstable foundation to the whole rest of the body. So this can affect your knees, hips, and back. So when we talk about this problem, this is something that you're never gonna outgrow. So observation is really not a uh, realistic treatment option because with every step, we have the reloading of these forces and until event eventually some kind of symptom is gonna happen in your foot, knee, hip, or back. Um, also, most of the patients that have this problem will never experience any pain or symptoms within their foot. The majority of symptoms are felt in their knees, hips, and back. Um, again, talking about treatment forms. So a lot of doctors will want to put an arch support on the bottom of the foot. And the only problem with that, and it might make, sound like it makes sense, but it cannot stabilize and uh, realign the ankle bone. With every step and while people are standing, this ankle bone is still displacing on the heel bone. So that's why we have Hypercure. This is obviously a blown up model of Hypercure, but Hypercure is a titanium stent that is inserted through a minimally invasive procedure into the sinus tarsi space. So let me take this off. You'll see that Hypercure sits in between the articular facets. So this does, it's really important to know that it does not go into a joint. So once the hypercure stent is inserted into the space, we still have the natural range of motion occurring. So hypercure doesn't block the motion, it restores the motion. One of the great features about hypercure is that unlike traditional rear foot reconstructive surgery, the hypercure device can easily be removed. Uh, so it's a great reversible procedure.